This is a really refreshing white from the Peloponnese. Um, it's called Notius. Time, yeah, I came to Food and Wine in 92, and I left for a short time in 2000, actually for a couple of years to go work for .com, and now I'm back. I came back in 2003. I went to a very liberal arts school in college and I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, my dad was a lawyer and so I thought that I would probably go to law school but first I was going to London to hang out with my friends and when we were driving back from school my dad was like, what do you want to do? And I said, I don't know, be a lawyer. And he said, well I think you like to write and you like to eat so maybe you should go work at a food magazine. Came back and um, worked a couple different magazines. And then I went to cooking school in France. Um, I went to a school called La Varenne that was really the most amazing place. Um, and it was it was in Paris, but they also um, opened up a sort of branch um, in a chateau in Burgundy. And it was really, believe me, it was like unbelievable. It was, I really think it's, it was heaven on earth. I think Gramercy Tavern represent something amazing in New York City. They did at Kraft, what Tom Clicchio did at Kraft is really, really cool as well. You know, the fact that he sort of broke down your dinner plate and so that you could pick the mushrooms or you could pick the potatoes you want to have with your steak. You could sort of design your own, um, your own dinner. It's huge. I think you can't overestimate the importance of Mamafuku. And we hear it in, in the, we hear chefs who are on the 50 best dining Let's say it in terms of. I think I would say Mama Fuku. I would I would put all the Mama Fukus together actually. But I think Sambar. I think that some chefs. I've heard some chefs from London and Paris came here and they were like, Wow, you can play really loud rock and roll music and you can or whatever. Not even you know you can play pavement. You can play alternative. You can play whatever you want to play. You can have um, you can have your servers in T-shirts with more tattoos than you've ever seen on one person <laughs> anywhere. Even skateboarding, you know, in the East Village. Um, and yet, they're really, really good. Um, I was in LA a couple months ago and I got to eat at A-Frame, which is Roy Choi from Kogi. It's his, it's his second bricks and mortar restaurant. Um, he went to Hawaii and got influence, so he does things like beer can chicken. He does um, a clam chowder that has some coconut milk in it. I can't remember what it's called, if it's called. Asian clam chowder or something like that, but it's ridiculous. It's so good. Um, that was really great. I was just in Atlanta. There was just an Atlanta Food and Wine Festival, and um, I ate at Holman and Finch, which is a restaurant that I think is great. And what they did, one thing that they pioneered, which is now a big deal um, around the country, is they have their burger program. They started at 10 o'clock at night. They ring a bell, and they only have 24 burgers. And so, as he probably told you. He, he came, it was sort of out of necessity, he didn't want to do burgers all night. His cooks were going to get sick of doing burgers, so he's like, we're only going to do 24 and we're only going to do it at a certain time when we sell it, it's gone. So um, we got to eat at home and Finch, which I think is great. We, me and my friends are obsessed with this um, mini-series that we hope HBO will pick up. and. Um, and yeah, it's definitely celebrity casting. Anthony Bourdain was not eligible to play himself. Um, Eric Bogazian, Bogazian would play him. Dan Barber would maybe be played by Paul Giamatti. That's exactly right. Phil Philip Seymour Hoffman plays Mario Vitale. Um, maybe Julianne Moore was going to play April Bloomfield, like with different hair. I mean, the <laughs> hair, the hair. There would have to be some, you know, some serious hair and makeup. Inspired.
Um, 